some of you may have seen my first video. I decided to take it all apart and build it again, actually showing you guys how I do it step by step. I'm also going to refine the design in the process because originally I had just used the cardboard box that it came with. Uh, so I bought a new filter. It's a 20 by 20 by one inch. And this is my secondary filter. It's what's going to help me to build up pressure from my air purifier behind here to help it flow through more evenly because the air purifier is not going to do that alone. Anyways, um, I've reused the uh, corrugated plastic from the last box. So this was uh, made up the square in the front that I actually did my work in front of and inside of. Uh, originally, I had not done it at the exact right size, so I'm going to modify that. So basically, to use this to build a box around it, I would need two pieces that are the same size, and then the other two pieces need to be a half inch longer, uh, because this is a quarter of an inch thick. So both sides is a half an inch. So I've marked out on this one already where I'm going to do my cut. So I'm going to do this here, and on the other long one, I will say the cut edges of this plastic is very sharp. Now I'm just going to use this one to mark out on the next one where I'm going to cut. Okay, so our next step is to reduce the depth. My last hood fan I had this much depth in the box in front of it, as well as being able to work in front of this. And it took up too much room. The reality is I only need about half as much. So I'm gonna take all four of these and I'm going to cut them all down. I'm just gonna mark 10. Now we're just gonna do that three more times for the other sides. Alright, so we've got all our pieces cut to our new depth, which is 10 inches. Now two of these are longer than the other ones. The filter is 19 and 3 quarters. So the two shorter ones are 19 and 3 quarters, and the two longer ones are half an inch longer at 21 and a quarter. I'll link in the description, but I'm using the 3M 1900 particle premium allergen bacteria and virus. These filters are directional, so you want to look on it for the arrows. And as you can see here, it's showing the direction. So the two shorts are going to go on opposite sides. All right, so I'm just using some black Gorilla Tape. I'm just going to get a couple pieces ready. This is obviously going to be easiest if you have somebody to help you. All right, so this is my short one. It's as long as the filter, which means I want to have this one overlapping this one like that. And now that it's all held up, it'll be much easier to use some longer pieces. And I'm just going to seam the whole corner, put half the tape on one piece. And I'm just going to do that to all four corners. Now as you can see, we've got the filter. It can just be taken in and out if you, can, if you need to change it. Now if there is a gap here on the side, obviously, as you can see. I will go around and tape all the way around all four sides of the filter to the plastic corrugation and that way it's sealed up all the way around and the only way something's getting through is directly through the filter. And then if I need to change the filter, I just cut the tape, change the filter and add some new tape again. Notice how I tuck it in here on the edge. Try to get it tucked in to the corner before I stick it to the side wall. That way it goes right in nicely and easy to clean. I'm gonna fill this little hole in too. 
All right, so we're all taped up inside around all those corners. Now I'm just going to seam these corners. Sometimes it helps to fold the tape in half like this, and then you get the bottom half stuck where you want it, and stick the bottom down, drag your fingertip through it to get the corner stuck right in there, and then smooth out the rest of it. All right guys, so there you go. First part is done. We got our box. This is where we'll do our work inside and in front of here. Now I just need to adapt my air purifier to blow air up and be collected to shove it through the other filter. Now, I'm kind of making this up as I go, so bear with me. I will leave uh, measurements and all the details in the description, so check there. All right, so here's the um, side piece from the old one, and it used to kind of just sit about here, but it's much larger than it actually needs to be. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit and then I'm going to use this as a template to trace out on a piece of hardboard that I'm going to use for the new part that's going to scoop the air into the filter. Alright, so I've got my new template for my sides. Now I need a front and a back piece and a top. I've got a clean piece of hardboard here that I'm going to use. I have cut it but I know that this is a square corner so I'm going to use it to start off here. I'm just going to straighten out these lines a little bit. Make sure you use a new sharp blade. I'm just going to score it a couple times. And we should be able to just snap it. Now that we've made our first cut, it's going to be much easier to do our second cut. Now whether you do this one first or this one first, it doesn't matter. sides. I'm going to trace this onto my scrap piece and make one more of these and then we'll move on to the next step. All right so we've got our box prepared, we've got our sides prepared. The next step would be to attach these onto here. Fill in the rest. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Alright, for my next trick, I'm going to fill in these pieces and then I'll figure exactly how to mount the bottom one thereafter. Alright, so the width, 20 and a half. It's going to be the same thing down here. Now we want to measure the length from the point to the point. Again, I'm going to provide cut sheets so you know exactly how big to cut. Whether you get this material or another material, I'll give you all the measurements so you can build it the same way. Um, so your angle here is 14 and a half. So 14 and a half by 20 and a half. A new piece is going to go like so. next. We already know it's 20 and a half. And our height is 8 and 3 quarters. Alright guys, so as I'm taping up the rest of this, I got one more piece to cut for the top and then the bottom. I did make it a little bit smaller, but it is still a little bit large, depending on what you're doing. I mean, it's not for me. I'm fine with this, and I live in a small apartment. I just put it up on a top shelf when I'm not using it. I'm trying to think of a way for this piece and this piece to be separate for storage purposes, but also easily attached together. Yeah, okay. I thought of a way to do this. Actually, this is going to work very well. So I'm going to, when we're done here, this is going to be a two-piece thing. And you're just going to literally put one inside the other one when you want to use it and take them apart to be able to store each one um, stacked on top of each other or to take up less space when you're not using it. Um, so make sure you stick to the end um, so you can see how I end up doing that. I've got the thought. For now, 
we're going to close in the other two halves of this. Our width is going to be based on that, so it's the same as everything else. So two and a half inches by 20 and a half. All right, so here's how I'm going to figure out where to cut the oval. Um, I can't use the cardboard one as a template because it wasn't cut perfectly to the size of the top of this. Based on the measurements I took earlier, and I've double checked those, it's 18 and a half across for the size of the cutout, and we have 20 and a half. So what I want to do first is I want to find the center of this piece of wood. All right, now we have the exact middle of this piece of wood, which is our bottom. Now if it's 18 and a half, then it means we need nine and a quarter in each direction from center. Now our width is nine and a quarter. So we're gonna measure four and five eighths on either side of center. All right, now we know the outer points on all edges of our oval. All right guys, so how we figure out the curve of the circle is pretty simple. Uh, we're just gonna take our compass and we're gonna put it on the center point and we're gonna line it up with our outer edge, which is four and five eighths. And now that we have that, we're gonna line our compass up on our line and our pencil mark and we're going to draw our curve. I'm going to do the same thing over here. If you don't have a compass you can use a piece of string or you can just cut a piece of cardboard and a pin on and pin your cardboard down and then um, and then put a hole in the end of it and put a pencil in the hole of the cardboard and you can spin it around or a piece of string. There's many different ways to do that. Now that we've got our curves, the rest is pretty simple. We're just going to go for the outermost point of our curve on both of them. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And there you have the exact cutout for that. Now you can carefully carve this around with a knife and then use a straight edge with the knife to cut the straight parts. Um, I happen to have a, a jigsaw and some other tools, so I'm going to uh, use that to cut it out. All right, so the laminar flow hood is complete. Got the plexiglass corrugation in the front. Used a 1 8 inch MDF to build the box in the back. I've got my room purifier propped up on a container so it's just a little bit higher than the table. And that way the cutout that I've got on the bottom here fits right over top of it nicely anytime I want to use it and the rest of the time it's just cleaning the air in my apartment and this just goes up on a shelf when I'm not using it. Anyways hope you found it helpful if you have any questions reach out in the comments I'm always happy to help and check the description for a cut sheet that'll help guide you through all the different sizes you need to cut if you want to do this yourself.